President Biden is delivering remarks on preventing a government default. The remarks come as White House officials and congressional leaders are meeting for negotiations on raising the debt ceiling. Let's listen. Right now, as we work together with other countries to support Ukraine and take on the challenges demand international cooperation, and from tackling the climate crisis to strengthening the global economy. And before I leave, I wanted to say a word about the status of negotiations with the congressional leaders. <clears throat> We had a productive meeting yesterday, and uh, with all four leaders in the Congress, it was civil and respectful, and everyone came to the meeting, I think, in good faith. I'm confident that we'll get the agreement on the budget that America will not default. And uh, every leader in the room understands the consequences that we fail to pay our bills, and it would be catastrophic for the, uh, for the American economy and the American people <clears throat> if we didn't pay our bills. And I'm confident everyone in the room agreed with the speaker, from, from the speaker to the majority leader, to the uh, majority leader in the House and the Senate, uh, excuse me, the majority leader in the Senate, the minority leader in the Senate, as well as the leader, the, the Democratic leader in the House, that we're going to come together because there's no alternative we, to do the right thing for the country. We have to move on. And uh, to be clear, this negotiation is about the outlines of what the budget will look like not about whether or not we're going to, in fact, pay our debts. The leaders have all agreed we will not default. Every leader has said that. And I'm proud of the progress my administration has made. We reduced the deficit in the first two years by $1.7 trillion in the first two years. And I proposed a budget that would reduce another $3 trillion over the next decade. That includes more revenue by asking the wealthy and large corporations to begin to pay, to pay their fair share. <clears throat> and. Uh, cutting subsidies that exist in the law now to big oil and big pharma. Yesterday, we all agreed that both the Speaker McCarthy and I would designate senior members that we would negotiate to give our authority to make agreements in detail on what we wanted. So we narrowed the group. We narrowed the group to meet and hammer out our differences. And we've done that. In fact, they met last night, and they're going to be meeting again today. <clears throat> and. Uh, and I'll be in constant contact with my team while I'm at the G7, and be in close touch with Speaker McCarthy and other leaders as well. Now, what I have done, in anticipation that we won't get it all done till I get back, is I've cut my trip short uh, in order to be for the final negotiations and sign the deal with, with uh, the majority leader. I made clear that, uh, and I'll say it again, America is not a deadbeat nation. We pay our bills. The nation has never defaulted on its debt, and it never will. And we're going to continue these discussions with congressional leaders in the coming days until we reach an agreement. And I'll have more to say about that on Sunday when I, when I have a press conference on this issue. As it stands now, the intention is to go to the G7, uh, be back here on Sunday, hold a press conference, and uh, in the meantime, uh, I'm going. I've, I've spoken to. Uh, the, the, the Australian leader, Albanese, and I've spoken to, I'm going to be seeing him at the G7. He'll be there as well, along with the Indian prime minister and along with the uh, Japanese as well. So the Quad members will be there. We'll get a chance to talk separately at the meeting, but it's unlikely I'm going to be going on to Australia. So thank you very much. Mr. President, what about work requirements specifically are you still considering? It sounds like it's still on the table, and you haven't ruled it out. Which would you be willing to accept? Well, I'm not there. I'm not going to accept any work requirements that's going to impact on medical health needs of people. I'm not going to accept any work requirements that uh, go much beyond what is already. Well, I, I voted years ago for the work requirements that exist. But it's possible there could be a few others, but not anything of any consequence. Well, Thank you. What message does this send um, to PNG and, uh, and, and to Australia? I know that was important to you to focus on Asia in this trip, but this is having to be put aside. Is this, is this almost a win for China? No. No, because we're still meeting. We still have four good allies. Now it looks like we're hearing from some of the congressional leaders. House and Senate Republicans are holding a press conference about the debt ceiling negotiations. Let's listen. Because our debt has gotten too large, Mr. President, even as senator, you voted no on many of these debt ceilings because you said you were upset that there wasn't enough savings. 
I've watched far back in the 2010, the chairman of Joint Chiefs, when our debt was only 14 trillion, told the American public the greatest threat to America was not China, was not Russia, it was our debt. It has more than doubled. Our debt is larger than our economy by more than 20 percent. If we do nothing, we will pay more in interest in the next 10 years than we paid in the last 83. If we do nothing and you follow along, and God forbid you get a Biden default because he ignores the problem just as ignored the border, said Mr. President, could we start our meetings? For 104 days, he said no. All the Democrats lined up and said, no, we just need to raise it. Because they added $6 trillion we had inflation harming every single family. They attacked the energy of America. We saw the price even go higher. We saw we became more dependent upon China, a supply chain challenge in America. Every week I would ask, could we just sit down? But he said no. The difference was Republicans in the House and the Senate got together to listen to the American public. And we said we would make sure that we don't have a Biden default. So we raised the debt ceiling. But in doing so, we did it in a limit, save and grow. Limit the future ability of Congress to just spend wildly and stop the inflation. So we said, let's start with spending where we spent just five months ago and grow e each year by 1%. Let's save the hardworking taxpayers money in this waste and money that you have appropriated that hasn't been spent like COVID that has sat there for two years. We finally got the president to sign a bill that the pandemic is over. And you know what else? Let's grow our economy so we're not dependent upon China. Let's help people get lifted out of poverty into jobs with work requirements, something the president as a senator voted for and President Clinton signed into law. Let's make sure we could build things in America again. Let's cut the red tape. Let's get some permitting reform that we know we can make America stronger and less dependent upon China. Well, we passed that bill. Had we not passed that bill, the meeting never would have taken place. Yesterday was a change. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.